Hello, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Welcome to Just Plain Living. I'm John Gray. Hi, John. I'm Peggy Burton. Yes, you are. And you're looking good this morning, Peggy well, Burton. Who's you. that over there? Oh, that's somebody we know. <laughs> I'm Lauren Foster. <laughs> and I'm Jim here. Fuller. <laughs> It's good to John see you John hesitated guys. there about the gentleman part. Yeah. Maybe right, we ladies. don't have any, we don't have any gentlemen <laughs> watching. Our audience there's Rocky. Audience there's, there's our. There's the, we have the gentleman in the audience. There's we have our a dog on the show. Yeah, Rocky's right. dog Rocky's right, right there. Rocky's been sick, so he has to be with <coughs> me. Showing so. the audience the best part of this. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> We're a package deal. If you want me, you got to have Rocky. <laughs> yeah, He's handsome. He, he is handsome. handsome. Dog. He's he is handsome. I hope all you got. I hope all you gentlemen out there had a good Father's Day. This Father's Day was this Did past you? weekend. It was different. It was we good. have a lot going on in our life right now, so home, so uh, it was a different type of a Father's Day, but it was a good Father's Day. I got to spend some time with my son, and I got to spend some time with my uh, father-in-law, who I care very much for, and is, who's a wonderful man, Mr. Bob Couch, and so. And I got to watch some of the golf, which I wanted. That was my Father's Day wish, was to watch the U.S. Open, and well, I got I got to see some of that. Who won that? Do we, do we know? Somebody I really didn't know. Right, I couldn't. Remember it was it, and it lasted till like about nine thirty at night. Forever. I yeah. know about it the activist that jumped up there and was um, making peacock calls. Did you see that on the news? Yeah, that was pretty <laughs> funny. It was funny. <clears throat> they're, they're they're interviewing the guy who won, and this. This man. That's why you can't remember who won. And, yeah, in a costume, <laughs> peacock costume, stands right in front of the camera and starts going, making bird sounds. Somebody, some, oh yeah, somebody came and just snatched him out. Some big guy jerked him out of there real quick. Yeah, he, he wasn't security. He was PR for the for the U.S. Open. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and the, the guy was he was protesting the you know deforestation and. Got some good PR. He did a good yeah, job. He did, he did. <laughs> and didn't even get arrested. <clears throat> he thought oh, they didn't arrest him. Mm -mm. Oh, amazing. I well, can't believe I asked more about won't, something he, that happened. He probably won't be invited back, though. <laughs> it's, it's such a it little It was because thing of the, the activist. Picture. If it wouldn't have been for yeah. that, you wouldn't have known a thing about it. <laughs> exactly. The U.S. Open? <laughs> so what about the guy that interrupted the president during his speech yesterday? Oh, he I missed, he, I he won't be invited back to the White House again. You don't think so? No, I don't think so. No, he, uh, he, they were, there was a lot of the talk of talking heads were talking about, you know, should you be able to interrupt the president? And he just did. Yeah, yeah, and he was a press guy and right in the middle of the speech. I mean, he didn't wait for the Q&A. He, he just stopped him right in the middle of the speech and asked him a question. And then what? The president go? shut him, him down pretty quick and then he did it again. <gasps> and the president shut him down again and... I guess the uh, I guess the the uh, the thing is is let's have enough respect for that office. Well, I, I agree hundred uh, percent. Yeah. allow no matter whether you agree or disagree, the that's the, the president office. of the United States of America. Allow him to talk until you're given an opportunity to ask speak. a question. Exactly, I agree with that. Yeah, and and you may just certainly disagree with the president, of course, but you got to remember that the majority of the people in this country put him there. And you'll have the opportunity to vote the other way. Right, you, right. You know, at the, at the proper time. If you're a press person, you're not supposed to have an no, opinion anyway. Exactly. There you um, go. <laughs> they, they were talking about Europe and how, you know, there was a there was a thing made about Parliament. I mean, you go into the their form of government. Oh, my gosh, and they're and, just carrying and on. They'll, they'll <laughs> smack you down every other word. Yeah. You know, they, they go back and forth at each do. other like a bunch of hens and roosters fighting. But that's just not the way it is here, and and the whole thing is, you know, uh, let's show some respect for the office oh, itself. Right. No matter who's sitting in the chair, the office garners respect, and, yes. and that it needs to be kept that way. And we've kind of we've kind of walked away from that, and that's well, not and that, good. That should be the case in schools and uh, everywhere. People that are speaking need to have the chance to speak, and when they're ready for questions, then they open it up. Yeah. And that's the way it should be. You're not and talking we are, about civilized <coughs> discourse. And, and we all should be better at that because I watch the Today Show and they'll have four people up there and they'll all four be talking at the same time and you can't understand what any of them are saying and that's the best of the best 
yeah. at doing what they do. You want me to interrupt you right now? Shall I keep talking? Yeah, go ahead. Come on, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because evidently that's the way it's supposed it's to be. It's supposed to be. We're days, all supposed to be talking know? at the same time. But uh, no, and I maybe it's just I'm just slow anymore about hearing and picking up on things. Sometimes they get so loud that it, it it's just you're thinking, why I am I watching? This? I can't watch and it. That like is the, the view. Question. I can't watch that. You know, you're speaking of having respect for the office. You know, our, our illustrious mayor, Mayor Lane Curley, and uh, Lane goes around to a school, a different school every week, and speaks to one of the classes Which in the I school. Which I think is a nice thing. It, it is a nice thing. And something kind of humorous happened over the weekend. My oldest granddaughter, Abigail, ran into the mayor at the mall, and she was, of course, with Nancy, and she said, you came to my school, and he said, yes, I did. Do you remember what I talked about? And she said yes and told him what he talked about. And I he said, I that. can't believe this. You're the first kid I've ever asked that that had a clue <laughs> that what wonderful. I was talking that about. He said, I don't think they listened. Oh, I'm so <laughs> proud of Abigail. <laughs> Smart little well, girl. Particularly for it to be Jenny's daughter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Jenny hey. usually doesn't know who the governor is. Or the, she may not even know who the mayor is. <laughs> You know. Maybe it skips a generation. Yeah, maybe so. Yeah, it's it's maybe funny, so. though. It's funny. <clears throat> so, now I know you have some things you want to talk about. Oh, my gosh. I want to talk about guys and dolls first. <laughs> Got a poster here. It opens next week on Thursday night. And it goes Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And Sunday, of course, the matinee. And to get tickets, it's www.communityplayhouse.org. That's or 581-7767. I hope I got that right. You did. You know, it's going to be a wonderful production. I'm doing the orchestra, and I'd like to just compliment the orchestra players. They often don't get a lot of accolades, but we have 15 people in the orchestra, and the people on stage, it's a phenomenal cast. You will absolutely love it. Get your tickets today. And Rosie, Rosie Graham is, is standing the right over there, hey, and she's going to come in. She's going to be on the show oh, in a little bit, okay. and, we'll and I think more. she might have Adelaide with her. Oh, fantastic. And, Adelaide and, Sarah. And, and, Adelaide and Sarah will be and on the Sarah show. And Sarah will be on the show. I guess Jacob's you know, at work. You know what I want to do right now, before Tell this me. happens? I want to wish Rosie Graham happy birthday because today is her birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Rosie. I love your legs too. Oh my goodness. Rosie Graham's got the best Great looking place. legs of anybody in the world. I love Rosie's legs. What's she wearing? I'm going to have to see. Yeah, I want to see has, too. She always has cool shoes too. Rosie, Rosie put your clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got we've got guys and dolls oh, next yeah. weekend. Just you had auditions. country All, auditions. Uh, this weekend, Sunday and Monday, we had close you to 100 you, people auditioning. Yeah. We had some great talent. Good. We had, I mean, we are right up there with American Idol. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, and then no, uh, what did. in we July? Really good. In July is ice cream social. Ice cream social on South Jackson's lawn, and we're looking forward to that. Well, that's great. We are busy, busy people. It's all over. And I just uh, finished at the Manchester Art Center. They did an international folk festival last week. I don't know if we talked about that, but it's over, so. And it was really <laughs> nice. It was really well, nice. It's over, it's over, so it really doesn't make any difference. because there was five countries represented, the Czech Republic and Belgium and Puerto Rico and on and on. And I think that's pretty phenomenal. Yeah, it is. It is. It's a good. place to present a group like that. We had, anyway. a, we had a member art show at the Fine Arts Center this past weekend, opening, grand opening for that. Did that go well? And it went very well. Uh, all of the members, anybody who's a member who wanted to display. Because a lot of times new artists and, and artists are brought in for a show like the National Watercolor Show or some of those shows that come around that are really not from here. And they're exceptional and their work is exceptional. But every now and then it's fun just to have the people, the local people, display the art that, that, that they do and our members are phenomenal, their artwork exactly. is incredible, and that's going to be up at the Fine Arts Center for a couple of weeks. So if you have an opportunity, drop open? by there. What time is the Art Center open uh, during the day? It's you know? open. It's Today? open. It's open. Well, I you shouldn't know, know but I, think I if don't. If you see a car out front, you know it's open. Yeah, because there's people in there teaching classes, and there's whether there's someone there exactly just to show show you around. 
maybe not all the time, but if you see a car there, stop by because there are people that are painting in there, there's classes being held. Well, and, you know, I think we need to understand that the fostering of the arts in this community go way back. Sure. And we have developed in this community not only singers, dancers, performers, artists, visual, craft artists, whatever, wood carvers. Sure. It's, it's phenomenal. Yeah. And I'm proud. Very, very good. So we'll, we have a little bit of that video on today's oh, show. Oh, okay. so showing that. Things going on. <laughs> See, that, now the opposite of the view is when everybody's waiting and to be nothing's polite. happening. Yes. <laughs> 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 All right, well, it's your turn. Wait, well, right, it's it's turn. excessiveness <laughs> of politeness on this set today. <laughs> uh, are you getting bored or is that what you're saying? Lauren? I'm biting my tongue. <laughs> yeah. You're biting your tongue. Go ahead, Lauren. Talk to uh, us. No, I can't. <laughs> it's, it's, it's all about you now, Lauren, so go ahead. Yeah, we, we've what? got you on the spot. Yeah, that's all right. The cameras are rolling. Tell yeah. us what you did this weekend. Oh, I saw it. I, I drove home from North Carolina and, no, wait, I didn't. I've been sitting at home with my sick dog for days and days and days and days. Yeah. So. And he seems to be doing good today. He seems to be He's doing better. He's decided to settle yeah. in. Yeah. He's fine. Yeah, you know, it's just so scary that, and, you know, okay, that, that my dog had seizures and had heat stroke and that could could have oh, killed wow. him. He Seizures. had to take him to the hospital. He has a seizure disorder. But anyway, I've noticed that on Facebook is becoming like news. I can't look at Facebook anymore without going, oh, that's just, just too depressing. Much stuff. Yeah, too much too stuff. Much stuff. Too much stuff. Too news. much things that we might My not friend know. in East Nashville died getting trapped in his walk-in cooler in his restaurant. You knew this? this I, oh, well, I knew. I said friend. He was, yeah. I, uh, he was from my neighborhood. Yeah. And trapped in a walk-in cooler? Yeah. yeah. You mean when you close the door, yeah, you can't get automatically get out? It was no. a defective lock. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And he, there was an alarm in there, and uh, he pushed the alarm, but the authorities came and they said they didn't see anything see wrong and outside. So, <sighs> and you know. because of power outages, they thought oh, it was a false alarm. And that's horrible. And he didn't that's have his terrible. cell phone. Well, he left his cell phone at home. Worked. It might not have worked in a cooler. It might, it might not have. It's just well, awful. It would have been a good thing to have. So we're going to be more positive <laughs> when we come back. That's yes, that's right. we are. <laughs> we're going to have all kinds of fun when, when we come back in today's show. Packed full of great stuff. Don't you go away. We'll be back in a minute with more just plain living. That's just. Hi, I'm Lori Thompson. And I'm Mike Thompson. And Lori and I have bought the dealership back on Highway 55, Thompson Ford, Tallahoma, Tennessee. It's back. It's wide open, open for business and ready to serve you guys in the community. And we want to thank you for allowing us to raise our children here. We've been here almost 15 years. We want to thank the community. Without you guys, we couldn't have done it. We know it was your support that allowed us to achieve this dream. Come be a part of the dream, something special. Come see us at Thompson Ford. Ask for Michael Lord. <laughs> Our office used to look like this, but now with my paper-free office from RJ Young, it's easy. We've made all of our files electronic and stored them in our virtual filing cabinet, which gave us tons of space. And Bob here, a big promotion. Melissa can pull files in minutes and spend hours on Facebook. And Kyle's confidential uh, files stay confidential. Uh, we're not totally paper-free, right? <laughs> my paper-free office from RJ Young. It's that easy. good can overcome. That is where your contributions to the Salvation Army go. All right, folks, welcome back, and uh, this is the time of year that you need to get your radio out and crank it up because it is time for the uh, radio field day and I have George Stone here with me right now and we're going to talk about what's going on in the radio world and George field day. Uh, field day is an exercise of amateur radio operators that uh, we go out in a public area and our public area is the Old Stone Fort mm -hmm. over in Manchester and 
we set our radios up. There's nothing there we, except bare ground. We put our own antennas up. We operate on our own, uh, own radios and we operate on emergency power which is to simulate what would happen in an emergency if all your communications went right, out. Right. And it's, it's an exercise for us. We do it once a year and it's hams all over the United States that uh, do it and we try to make as many contacts as we can. Uh, we use uh, voice, digital communication, satellite, solar powered, any means of communication that uh, hams can do, we use. This is June 23rd and 24th is when this takes place and ham. Where where in the world did that I, term ham radio come from? I do not know unless it's it's uh, it, the first two letters of the amateur and somebody put an H from. I don't don't know, but it's been around for a long time. Or maybe it comes from the theatrical thing in which a fellow that talked a lot was called a ham. <laughs> but it's a amateur radio yeah. operators is a the more correct title. And they're all licensed. You have to take a test to do it to uh, do communications in your own uh, controlled uh, uh, frequencies that the federal communications allows you to use. Uh, now, how how is that how is that gone with uh, the 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 technology change and all of a sudden there's cell phones and all of a sudden you know the broadband and all of that there's people using up that airspace that used to be pretty much open we, for for you kind of guys does that does all does all of this has it affected radio to, operation very to much some, to some small extent it has there's a lot of competition for radio frequency space because there are so many things out there the nature of amateur radio has changed greatly over the years i've been a ham for 35 years and it was primarily voice. Now we use all sorts of digital communications. We use uh, 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 slow scan television. Uh, the emphasis, and, and at that time, a lot of Morse code. You, we still use all of those, but the emphasis now has been like on uh, uh, digital communications and uh, uh, similar similar sort of things. With uh, voice still around, much so because everybody understands that. But uh, the, the Morse code is diminished somewhat, but we do all means of getting a message out. Well, you know, it's, it's always sort of amazed me how, because until we started doing this type of work, the television work, uh, you know, the average person who's not involved in what you do just really doesn't think about all the sound waves and everything, and that the federal government is involved and in, in, to a certain extent in regulating who uses what because I know these wireless microphones recently or a couple of years ago there were some microphones that we had that became unusable because of the uh, the frequencies changed where the government or whoever the regulatory commission is I assume it's the government federal communications federal commission. communications commission says okay we need this for something else and we're going to raise you up or down somewhere and and until you're involved in that, you know, that's something that the average person doesn't even think about what, what's going on in the air that they walk through and they breathe and they live in, what, what type of signals and everything are running back and forth. And I guess if, it, if they were all color-coded some way like neon and you walked around and saw what was traveling back and forth, in the sky above you just blow your mind. It, it, it would. I mean this room is filled with electronic uh, uh, communications from your cell phone to the devices we're talking on now and there has been a lot of competition and I'm familiar with the uh, the mic, the, the frequency on these uh, mics mm -hmm. because uh, our church had them and, and those frequencies were given to the emergency services but there's a lot of change the the local police will go and they'll set a teletype up whereas and use it in their car and they'll fax things and before would they just talk so it's, right. it's fierce competition but right. let me get back to the field day yeah we well i just but but that lets you these guys these guys are out there doing the same thing they've done for years and years and years getting ready to help everyone in case of an emergency yes there there are a couple of practical examples when Katrina hit New Orleans 
cell phone towers went out, electricity went out, and uh, in many areas the only communication out was amateur radio. And uh, we can span the distance, we can do it local. Also, one that a lot of people is not uh, aware of, which some of the older members remember when they had that earthquake in Oakland, California. Uh, we were the only means of communication for many days because the cell phone towers went out and the power went out. Uh, so we're still around in emergencies. We also, the ships at sea and these private yachts and sailors, a lot of them rely on it for their emergency communications and right. regular communications. Uh, the demonstration of what we do will be this weekend at Old Stone Fort and we'll set up uh, this Saturday at 8 o'clock. We'll start operating at, le at 12 and we'll operate through until s Sunday at noon and it and it uh, uh, five or six o'clock we have a meal and people are welcome to come out and visit us uh, it's you're welcome to eat but it's potluck so you better bring something with you and we'll, <laughs> we'll add to the pot we'll add to the pot and we'll show you what amateur radio is all about but we set up and operate in public places We've operated in Tullahoma at the Girls Academy in the past mm -hmm. and Old Stone Fort. But Old Stone Fort, they've been very nice to us over there. So I want to give my thanks to the park ranger over there. Well, we want to give our thanks to you and your group, you know, for, for I, I don't want to call this an outdated technology because it's not an outdated technology. It's, it's a very up-to-date technology, but it's something that's been used for a long time that continues to have a place in our society and helping us be prepared in times uh, in rough times. Yeah, we, well, we evolve with the times. You know, we started with Morse code, and now we're in digital meet, digital uh, means, and slow scan TV. So we evolve with the situation, and we can connect to the internet too. So it's we're we use everything. You're ready. We're ready. You guys yeah, are, yeah. are ready to go. Our, our motto is when all else fails, amateur radio is there. That's right. Yes, sir. that's right. And you can talk overseas. Oh yes, whatever yes. you need yes. to. And I guess, I guess uh, that's been an interesting part of of uh, being a ham is over the years some of the people and some of the contacts you've made in other countries and and uh, that just has to be fun. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, it it encompasses all range of people from the richest to the poorest. We've had the. Uh, 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 King of uh, Jordan is is one of the famous ham that most people a lot of some of the country music stars. Chet Atkins was a yeah, ham. Yeah. That, so um, that's, that's a couple great. of people that you you would recognize. All right. Well, George, she's telling us it's time for us to well, go. Thank ham you, radio. John. You yeah. go. Let those folks come out and see you this okay, weekend. We'll and, look forward to seeing you. And that's at Old Stone Fort. We'll be right back after these messages. Uh -huh have changed since Traders Bank first opened our doors in 1889. Back then, online banking meant people were waiting ahead of you. And technology? The word hadn't even been invented yet. Even though banking has transformed over the years, at Traders, one thing has never changed. Friendly smiles, a neighborly hello, and a sincere appreciation for our customers. When a Traders employee says, you're welcome, you are, and you always will be. Traders Bank, you're welcome. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. These are the children who had no chance. They're known as Brazil's street kids. They wander the streets dying by the thousands from drugs, AIDS, and bullets. Most of them have been abandoned, left to survive on their own. These children needed a place to go. I had to do something. So I brought it up at Rotary. People heard about what we were doing and asked how they could help. Together, we raised funds to give them a home and open the school. They're learning a trade. Now hundreds of kids have a family and a future. They're contributing to the community because Rotary believes in making things better for everyone. Rotary is making a difference right now. They have hope. Rotary gives people an opportunity to help. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're pleased to have joining us on the set now to my left, Ava Lynch, and uh, who is the new occupational safety director? Is that occupational health services? Health services director at Hart and Regional Medical yes. Center. 
and of course uh, Stephanie Spiegel who you will recognize as the marketing person at Heart and Regional Medical Center. And uh, this is something new you guys have added, right? It is, a new service it line. It is. We, um, we have a, it's a new department and a new service line as Stephanie said. Um, the leaders, the administration of our hospital and of HMA um, recognized that there was a need in our area mm -hmm. for um, some services directed um, specifically for employers, mm -hmm. their needs that they face, uh, workers comp, injured employees, um, a lot have substance abuse policies that need to be updated. Uh, we assist with those, of course I'm not an attorney, not mm -hmm. legal, but um, the state of Tennessee has Tennessee Drug Free Workplace Program and by participating in that, make an application um, there's some specifics as far as to uh, drug screening, what you have to do, but there's a mandated 5% premium discount on your work comp premium, which for a lot of employers... Yeah, well that's significant. That <laughs> it, is. Very significant. it is. It is. So um, those type of things. Um, we can also help the smaller employers that don't have HR departments or um, safety folks or a corporate or home office who want to do um, the right thing by having a substance abuse policy providing um, a safe environment for their employees but don't know what to do. So uh, we have those sample policies from the state of Tennessee. Um, there's letters that are templates from the state, uh, the Drug Free Workplace Program, um, that can be utilized by employers. And there's certain things you do to notify your employees of what's going on. Uh, you're going to make changes or you're implementing a new policy. And then an acknowledgement letter, um, them actually receiving a copy. Uh, you give them at least 60, 90 days notice um, at a minimum. That's prior to starting the program. Right. So that, that gives anyone that has problems, uh, has issues, to either come forward and let you know as an employer that they have issues, they're going to seek assistance and help. Um, you know, those kind of things for the smaller employers. Now those are also good for the larger employers basically because of that 5% discount. Uh, we also will go on site. We have um, at Harden um, Health and Wellness Department, some folks who uh, Stephanie's coordinated with, gone out and helped with health fairs before, but we've not really been in a position, I don't think, to market it. It's, it's basically been on when folks call in and said, um, you know, we're going to have a health fair, can you all do anything? So we'll be actively going to uh, folks and letting them know about those services. Um, we can come on site and get some of the new physicians that come in um, to do talks on wellness, whatever. It, it's always good to pair up the physician that um, whatever his interest is or his love is as far as promotions on wellness um, or it could be a topic of the month because their observance is every month for uh, health care, um, you know, breast cancer awareness, prostate cancer awareness, um, those kind of things. And a lot of the um, employers, because of uh, TOSHA, OSHA and those kind of things, have regulatory things that are required, um, bloodborne pathogen training. Um, hepatitis B rounds, mm -hmm. if they serve on a uh, first aid um, grouping or a first responders or team leaders, they're, diff they're called different things in, in different companies. But when there's a likelihood that those folks could possibly be exposed to blood, fluids, um, you're required to offer those people three rounds of hepatitis B mm -hmm. uh, to try That's to... That's a lot. It is. Yeah, it, it's okay. a regulation under uh, OSHA or TOSHA. And then also we provide, uh, we can help with doing the titer, which is after the three rounds, seeing what the immunity levels measure in their system. Um, there are just lots of things. Um, when uh, employers locally send their employees to our emergency department for treatment of work-related injuries, it's real important for us to be on top of it as quickly as possible, not only taking care of the patient, which of course is first, but um, getting the information to the employer. There may be follow-up required, you know, if it's 
broken bones, strains, things with orthopedics. Um, it may be follow-up or release from a physician that the company has on their work comp panel. And what you want to do is get it back to them, their case manager at the insurance carrier, so they can get on top of it as quickly as possible and make those follow-up appointments and do those things that, um, that continuation of care that are, that are needed because that employee wants to get back to work without restrictions. I mean, you always hear about the few that try to take advantage of a system mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, abuse workers' comp. But the majority of employees want to get back to full speed, full duty, um, to enjoy a quality of life that, that they had prior to an injury. So um, I'm not letting you talk, am I? I don't, I don't need to talk. <laughs> you're, you're the guest here. <laughs> Go ahead. But, yeah, one quick question. Um, yes. When we were doing, when we were talking prior to coming on, I thought this was something that was just for Harden employees, but that's not oh, the case. No, this sir. is for the entire community, right? right? right. We have and like Ava said, yes. we, we've done some of this in the past, just not had a dedicated service line specifically mm -hmm. to it. We've been in the community and we've helped with our local industries as far as managing or trying to manage some of their workers' comp issues, um, whether it be through the ER when they come in or going out to do education on their side. You right. know, we've done flu shots in the industries, just lots of little things, but it's not ever been a full service line that's um, got someone dedicated to reaching out to the industries to say, how can we help you? And that's where Ava's going to come in. This is huge. It so is it wonderful. is. For, for goodness sake. Yes, I mean, yes. I, it's really yeah. good for our community. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. For and a lot of reasons yeah. to keep our employees here the industry employees here not to go out of town be sure they're aware of the specialties that we can offer and Abel will be the one connecting those dots to utilize those oh, services. Okay. And uh, we're about out of time so let, let, let me uh, let you tell us how they can get a hold of you uh -huh. if they'd like to take advantage of this Well, uh, registration's free. Uh, we set up protocols. Uh, I've been setting those up as employers have those folks in the emergency department. We will be going out in the community. We're, we're to the point of announcing and, and getting employers. All they have to do is call in if, if they've not already talked to me and um, we'll get them their information. Make sure we have it on file in the emergency room. Um, in outpatient services, we provide pre-employment drug screens, post-accident drug screens that don't require medical attention. Uh, then call into the hospital. What's the direct line to the hospital? 931-393-3000. And then my number is 393-7882 directly. But if you get the operator and tell her you want to talk to Ava, right. then they'll shoot you through. Okay. Great new program. I'm <laughs> yeah. always impressed here. Yeah. I wish I'd have caught on quicker. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, girls, for yes, so much sir. for being yes, here sir. today. We'll be right back in just a moment with more living right after these messages. I'm NASCAR driver Mark Martin. You know what's worse than waiting in traffic? Waiting in the emergency room when you're in pain. So choose the ER that's extra fast, ER Extra. ER Extra is specifically engineered to get you the help you need and back in action with race car speed. ER Extra, extra fast, extra easy, extra great. ER Extra, exclusively at Harton Regional Medical Center. Get Telehoma's news first, fast, and free with Telehoma's News Leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Jimmy and Jenny bring you local weather, sports, community calendar events, birth announcements, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Telehoma's news? Get it first, fast, and free with News Leader on Channel 6, your local information network. When you see the sign, The Main Event, take a close look inside at a hair studio that offers services by some of the best master stylists in Middle Tennessee. These stylists offer a list of services that compete with large city salons, from trendy cuts for men, women, and children, to the latest color techniques, including highlights and bold color accents. Other services offered include permanent hair weaving and relaxing to formal hairstyle for that special occasion. You can also give yourself a very special treat with a full makeover including full body waxing. For your convenience, we are open Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. until the last client leaves happy. Call and make your appointment at 
571-8682 or stop by our Telehoma location at 207 North Jackson Street. Pamper yourself at the main event today. How long has it been since you raced a cheetah? Are your tornado creating skills getting rusty? Tired of being the only one in your neighborhood who hasn't built a dinosaur? Sounds like it's time to visit the Hands-On Science Center. The Hands-On Science Center is an indoor science playground. In this museum, please touch is the rule. Join us for weekly science demonstrations on space, lasers, lizards, rocks, and a whole lot more. No two visits are ever the same, so visit often to see our ever-changing exhibits and demonstrations. The Hands-On Science Center, 101 Mitchell Boulevard in Tullahoma. You're going to be so glad you hung around to watch this segment of the show. We've been talking about Guys and Dolls, which we're so excited about opening next weekend. And I have a couple of guests with me today. First, I have Samantha Terrell. Hey, Samantha. She's playing the part of Sarah Brown in the production Guys and Dolls next weekend. Hey, Sarah. Hello. Brothers and sisters, resist the devil and he will flee from you. That is what the Bible tells us. And that is why I am standing here today in the devil's own city, on the devil's own street, prepared to do battle with the forces of evil. Hear me, you gamblers, you with your dice and your cards and your horses. Pause and think before it's too late. Sarah. I believe that tells a little bit about your part. It does. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. And I see that you have brought with you Lindsay Slaughter, and Lindsay is playing the part of Adelaide. Oh, I think Adelaide's been uh, engaged for 14, 14 years, years, hasn't she? Yes. Poor thing. The average unmarried female, basically insecure due to some long frustration may react with psychosomatic symptoms difficult to endure affecting the upper respiratory tract in other words just from waiting around for that plain little band of gold a person can develop a cold <sighs> What fun. It is. Okay, now you can become yourself <laughs> if you like. I, I love you and your characters. And it, you Thank pretty you. much let us know what the characters are like just from that little bit. Mm -hmm. Tell me, when did we open? We open next Thursday, mm -hmm. June 28th. 7.30? Yes. yes. 7.30 <laughs> at the Tullahoma High School. Yes. I've got to be sure and <laughs> let everybody know that we're doing this at the Tullahoma High School in their beautiful auditorium, which yes. has a huge stage Gorgeous. because of the huge cast. Right. And you're from Shelbyville, aren't you, I Lindsay? am from Shelbyville, yes. We're so happy to have you come over here I'm and do a part for us. Mm -hmm. And what is your favorite part about being Adelaide? Oh, my gosh. She's so over the top and very dramatic and I get to do lots of these things. She's yeah. very cutesy. <laughs> I love her. We love how you change your voice to, uh -huh. to fit mm -hmm. the character. Yeah. You've done a great job of that. Thank you. And I know we have a wonderful <laughs> cast. We want to make sure you know how to get tickets. Uh, four, five, five, wait, five, eight, one, seven, seven, I better it's on look. The poster. I better look. Here it is on the poster. <laughs> Let's show the poster. And I know you can get tickets online by going to www. Uh, communityplayhouse.org yes. and you can get tickets online so you don't have to stand in line. You can even pick out your own seat and mm -hmm. I think that's wonderful. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Please. Who's playing opposite you? Um, James, oh I've forgotten his oh, last name. Oh that's alright. Anyway, Eric. James Erickson. Right. James Erickson right. and, and he's but playing he's Nathan. My Nathan. <laughs> and he, uh -huh. and he's your Nathan who uh -huh. has been hanging around for 14 he's years. He's been hanging around. He's a lot of trouble though. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps running his crap game. I keep telling him not to but he never listens to me. He never listens. He's always in a crap mm -hmm. game. That's, that's a lot of, Luck Be A Lady Tonight is one of my favorite uh -huh. songs by the way. Mm -hmm. And that's one yes. of the big songs. What's one of your big songs? Mine is If I Were a Belle. Mm -hmm. And I love that. Yes, it's quite funny. <laughs> she's the most relaxed she's ever been in the whole play. And we don't want to give anything no. away because there's a lot of surprises <laughs> in Guys and Dolls if you haven't seen it. And I haven't yes. seen it in a long time. Of course, I'm doing the orchestra and a lot of it becomes new again because of the way you all are, are presenting yourselves. Hmm. I thought it would be good to get these phone numbers on the screen. 581-7767. I did have that right. 455-0620 and www.communityplayhouse.org. Ticket prices are very, very fair. $15 for adults. I guess seniors aren't adults. They only have to pay $13. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's wonderful. And then $10 for students. And I don't know, I think it might be students under 12, but maybe it's through college. I'm not sure. Anyway, it's a wonderful prize to see such a great musical. And it's going to be presented for four days. Yes. And uh, you expecting all your family to show up? Is your brother coming? I sure coming? hope so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you had any sleep lately? I have a little bit, yes. I know some people that have had less that have involved. I know. Involved. There's a lot yes. of rehearsals involved in a play of this magnitude. <laughs> oh, yes. But and it's been a lot of fun. There's I'm great glad. people in the play. Oh, Listen, yes. I, I think it might be good to uh, mention the directors. Mm -hmm. Rosie Graham, mm -hmm. Janet yes. Patterson, the choreographer is Beverly Long. And there's a mm -hmm. vast amount of people behind stage yeah. that we usually don't talk about mm -hmm. that make this thing happen. It's not just a single production. Mm -hmm. Right. And you two are ready to go and you've been up since dawn. <laughs> <haven't Yes. you? laughs> and it amazes me how you've gotten yourself together for this. Because well, I know you. you were at rehearsal <laughs> very late last night. Yes. All right, let's talk about uh, the fact that we open next Thursday night yeah. and the fact that Friday night we know is there's the local yes. uh, air fireworks show. going on in the air show and so <laughs> we hope that people will still come to the play and they can run outside and see the fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> some background music. Yeah, some background music going on. <laughs> Adds drama. That, yeah. And some drama. Yes. There's some great songs in this play. I, oh, there are. You know, I should be able to name them all, but do you, do you have a favorite that you sing? Hmm, my favorite is probably with Nathan, and it's Sue Me. It's a duet. Mm. You know, that's one that I that's wake cool. up singing. <laughs> sue Me, it's Sue so Me. It's so catchy. I, that's a real catchy song. Uh -huh. And I, I, and I like to hit him. I had totally forgotten that song. <laughs> and it's, it's one that catches your, uh -huh. you find yourself singing. Mm -hmm. And that's a great song. Mm -hmm. Well, we do mm -hmm. hope that you will go out and buy tickets for this event that is coming up at the Tullahoma High School on opening next Thursday. It's only one weekend, so don't yes. get the idea that you can come both weekends. We have we open next Thursday and it goes Friday and Saturday at 7:30 and then Sunday at 2 p.m. and it closes down. Will you be sad? I yeah, will. Definitely. We'll most likely cry at the <laughs> end. <laughs> Probably. I'm excited because I know both of you have been either music majors or theater majors mm -hmm. and you've graduated yes. and you have your own little thing going on. Mm -hmm. When is your play I do. It, with the kids? Well, we are planning to do it in September. Okay, so yes. you're still open for, and people can find you on Facebook, Yes, right? they can find us. It's Help Out Inc., and it's a nonprofit, and we help kids in education and the arts. I think so that's we do. wonderful. And you are in college, uh -huh. majored in music? Yes, music education. And where are you going to school? I'm at Tennessee Tech. You love it? Oh, I love it there. There's it's some fantastic. great teachers up there. Unbelievable teachers. They really are. Mm -hmm. They must be, or you wouldn't be so wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. What are some of the... Uh, plays to your credits that you have done before that you were especially good. I know you did patch hmm. the quilting. The I did quilters, yes, with MRC about two years ago. I was also in Little Women. I played Joe oh. before the whole the fire happened. Yes, I like that, yeah. yes, and I was in It's a Wonderful Life as well at the oh, high good. school. We did it, and I was Mary Hatch. And how about you? Hey, I was just Mary Hatch too. <laughs> oh, were you really? In in Shelbyville, we did the radio production. The stage. Do you do a lot of productions production. at uh, Tennessee Tech? I don't do any productions at Tennessee oh, really? Tech. I'm too busy with my you're music too busy stuff. with your music. Uh -huh. Are you but, uh, have a particular direction you're going? Well, uh, Will you become an opera singer? Will you become no, a no, theater no. major? No, I hope to become a choir teacher, actually. A choir teacher. Mm -hmm. Well, that is wonderful yeah. because we need beautiful and talented <laughs> teachers. And then you're working with children and you'll both be working with students. All right, let's don't forget. Guys and dolls, when you see a guy, that, that's yes. a lead Rachel song, Stars isn't it? Sky, you, you can, can bet that he's doing, doing it for some doll. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, thanks a lot for coming. Thank you. Thank we you. will be back with more of Just Plain Living. <laughs> Citizens Tri-County Bank has the checking, loans, savings, and traditional banking services you want. Plus free internet banking and bill pay, bank your change, Visa gift card, and lots more state-of-the-art banking services. We focus on the service and services you want. So you can bank when, where, and how you want. At our offices, or from just about anywhere. Citizens Tri-County Bank, the only community bank you'll ever need. This facility was built literally on the international dateline to bring Charter customers tomorrow's technology first. Like Charter Internet, which was just made faster again. With speeds up to 100 megs, you can download a movie in two minutes. 
the number one internet service provider in the nation. Click. Fogelman, good luck with the presentation tomorrow. Already nailed it. Get Charter Internet Express for only $19.99 a month. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, as we were talking in our opening segment today, a lot of things happened in our area over the weekend. Festival over in Bell Buckle and a uh, big store opening in uh, Lynchburg this weekend, but there were several car shows as well. And one huge car show took place in Shelbyville this past week because it was a national antique car show. And uh, I know that the folks and uh, our friends in Shelbyville were very, very tickled to have that in their city. There was a, a, like over 400 uh, antique and classic cars at the, on the celebration grounds in Shelbyville. Our Jerry Harris, and along with C.J. Henry, was there and we've got some video from that huge car show in Shelbyville. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. We're here in Shelbyville on Celebration Grounds, and I am with Mr. Wallace Cartwright, the mayor of Shelbyville, and y'all are having a fantastic car show over here. This is the greatest thing that's ever happened to Tennessee. It's the first time it's ever been a Grand National show in the state of Tennessee, and uh, we did have a, a Southeast meet here back in the 90s, I think, and uh, I don't really know that much about that because I wasn't involved, but this time I've been involved on it, and we have a dual meet. It's the Grand National and the Southeastern National, and today is Saturday, so it's the, day, uh, you know, the Southeastern meet today. But you can see the automobiles, but you should have seen them yesterday. They were the cream puffs. Well, I heard this place was packed yesterday. Of course, we was getting ready for a horse show last night, so we missed it. But I, I talked to Tom, who helped put this together. And, uh, and then, of course, he worked with the, with the celebration here. And he was telling me how great it was. So we had to come over to get a little bit of this. Yes, sir. I I'm, I'm appreciate y'all coming over. I think y'all are the only news media that's been out here. So that's, that's great for us to have some publicity. Uh, but uh, it's it's been great. You you can see the automobiles that are here. Some that I've never seen before, never heard of. Uh, and Mr. Jones from uh, up in Mount Juliet and uh, Jones Brothers Construction Company. I found that out yesterday. But he's got some. He's got two automobiles over there, and the name of them are Jones. That, right? They were manufactured in in uh, somewhere in Kentucky, I think, back years ago. And uh, but there was. Or, or, Mercer, a uh, little car right there is a Browning, Brownington, Browning car, Browning car. Never heard of one of them before. Somebody told me that, that was worth nearly a million dollars. That little car right there is worth a, just nearly a million. It looks a lot like a toy. Yeah, it does. But uh, it looks That's like well, something I'd, I'd buy my grandchild. I believe I'd have a guard on it. <laughs> I do, I would too. Well, he's standing behind. <laughs> we got we had Stanley steamers here yesterday. We've got steam cars over there today. They came up through here blowing the whistles. Sound good, you know. Sound well, like we're going to get us some video of all them. Yeah, well, appreciate. Yeah, yep. you can see all the old cars up through there. We yesterday was fantastic. I, I never saw the like of automobiles, and like I say, they were all cream puffs. Looked like they rolled out of the showroom and brought out here. Well, we're about to go over here and interview a gentleman that's been showing the same car for over 50 years. Now, that's pretty good. That's good. That's good. Now, you've got it here in Shelbyville, the home of the Tennessee Walton Horse, so we're ready to go watch him. Now, tell me a little bit. I I've heard that this vehicle that you've got here, you've been showing it for over 50 years. I bought it in November 51, restored it in 52. I started showing it in 53. It's been to every Hershey meet in Hershey, Pennsylvania since 1954, other than three wee years. It's been there every year. It's been all over the country. It's been to California twice. The only state that has not been in it, Oregon and Washington. But it's been in every other state in the country. And that's in Tennessee. And now it's in Tennessee, right. All right. right. But it's won everything you can win in Nashville. You'll notice the boards down here, the little pieces of uh, pewter on the boards. That represents some national meets I've been to. And you have to... Uh, pull 350 points to get it, no problem. I got my 159th yesterday. I'm the only car in the association over 100. Is that right? That's right. And yesterday, I came here to get the preservation. They had, yesterday, they had the Senior Grand National here. You have to pull 390 points out of 400 to get a Senior Grand National. I said, this car's not going to do it. I know i got problems with it. Bounces over the road. 
darned if I didn't get another senior. It's number nine. That's nine. <laughs> number nine. And the only college has got nine in the association. And That's fantastic. Yeah. So it's won everything in win. So if we have another event here next year, you going to come back? If it's a national meet, I'll probably be back, yep. All right, now where do you go from here? Go home. <laughs> Newburgh, North Carolina. Newburgh, North Carolina. That's yep. where you're from. That's where I am now. Originally New Jersey. Originally been, New Jersey. I've been down to Newburgh 31 years. But this is one one car. I have another one on the H field, F field over here in the grass field. Identical to this car, but it's never been restored. Okay. It's dirty, it's rusty, but it runs like a charm. <laughs> as long as it runs good, it gets you to runs, town. That's right. You know, I'll, I gave thirty-five dollars for my first car. Well, I, I, I bought a Model A Roadster for ten many years ago. <laughs> uh, you beat me then. I can't, <laughs> I can't match that. No, no, no. no. But, well, Rip, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you again next year, and I, I hope you just keep on winning. Well, I hope so. I'm going to keep trying. I'm 81 now. I don't know how much longer I can keep going. Oh, you got a bunch of years left. I can tell. Well, I got a big rig out there. I'm 75 feet long on the road, and uh, it's a job to drive it. And uh, so I keep going. Keep it's young. fun. Keep, I like to judge women, chassis. <laughs> Thank you, Rip. <laughs> okay, thanks. Day. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm with Ann and Bob Jones. They're from Mount Juliet, Tennessee, but they have got a story about two, they call these Joneses, right? These are Jones vehicles. Yes, sir. Now, how long have you had them? We've had them probably 15 years. Mm -hmm. Do you ever drive them yourself? No, they're just in and out of the show fields. They are not licensed to be on the road. What about you? Do you ever slip out in one of them? No, he wouldn't let me. He wouldn't let you? <laughs> All right, well, tell us the story behind these. I know your wife was telling me, Ann was telling me a little bit about it. but Phil Well, we're, we're, we're old Chevrolet and Model T collectors by trade, but when we learned that they did make a Jones automobile, we thought, well, how nice if we could ever acquire one. So we started the search, and sure enough, Two turned up in Detroit, Michigan. Took us two years to buy them from this doctor. But we did and brought them home and started restoring them. In 97, we took the two finished restored cars to Hershey, Pennsylvania. They won the national award on their first rent out. Since then, we've searched the world over and found two more. The yellow car and then we found the green one in Scotland talked to the man in Scotland and he was very nice he let us bring the car back to its country of origin he said that he didn't know what he'd do if it played out on him so we were delighted it took a slow boat to China to get back to t Tennessee <laughs> took a slow boat to China but you were keeping up with the Joneses right that's right that's what this is that's well, it your wife was telling me that they originally made these because of the oil fields and the Indians and wanting bigger vehicles that is true they were made in Wichita, Kansas from 1914 to 1920. John J. Jones, no relation to us other than name only, saw the need for the bigger car, made a fortune selling Model T's and went broke building Joneses. World War I and a big fire put him out of business. But fortunately enough, he made about 3,000, and we know of six Joneses left in existence and we've searched the world over for any more we've about got enough parts to build the seventh car but we know of the six that are in existence and we have four of the six in our collection fully restored grand national winter cars that is fantastic but the indian part was what enthused me now they went from the riding horseback to a bunch of horsepower when they got this right what, what's the horsepower in one of them they're about 60 horse they're designed to run there they call them 660 60 six cylinder cars run 60 mile an hour but that was fantastic for those days of mud roads dirt roads no not even gravel roads in those days but uh, they, cost they twenty eight hundred dollars. They were they were is that right? High price for the day. Model T's were selling for you know like three hundred and Chevrolet four hundred and that price range. So you had to be pretty affluent in those days. Yeah, because I was thinking when I first come out of the military, I bought my first car and I gave less than three thousand dollars for it, brand new. So back in that would that was expensive. But the the Indians liked uh, brilliant, bright, flamboyant colors, and that's in the specifications. So any color you wanted, as long as you'd furnish them a sample down to your wife's favorite dress. So any color is correct. Consequently, we have the rainbow colors in our collection. 
Well, I know you're having a good time, and you, I know your wife is educating everybody that comes by while, while you and another gentleman get back there and tell stories, right? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> well, I appreciate you taking the time to talk with us, and, and I love your vehicles. Thank you. I really do. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you all. Thank you. I went to several colleges, but when I stepped into this gym, it just felt like home. Just learning the different techniques and the way Mr. Bryan tells us how to study the subject, art, that's where it's really at for me. I decided to go to nursing because I've always wanted to help people. You make those connections that you probably never forget. This is my motto, my future. I'm Marley Matlin for the American Red Cross. In an emergency, infants and children can't always tell you what's wrong. Being able to read critical signs and knowing how to respond can make all the difference. The Red Cross offers infant and child CPR training where you can learn how to recognize and respond to respiratory and cardiac emergencies. Visit www.redcross.org or call 1-800-HELP-NOW. Together, we can save a life. for things other people get right away just doesn't make much sense. Get high-speed charter internet and enjoy downloads way faster than DSL. Alright folks, we're coming back and I, the reason I'm smiling so big is I have my buddy up here, Dr. Ed Lawson, and he's always fun to have on the set and because uh, he knows so much and he he relays things in a different way I understand it better when I listen to what you have to say. Well I appreciate that. And Thank I think much. a lot of people do and that's how come you're respected in your practice and you have a great deal because not only does Ed care about people he cares about all living things. Yes. And that's animals included. That's right. Right now we're having a special at our office for a donation of $39. Um, you can begin your care at Lawson Holistic Chiropractic. That will cover exams and any needed x-rays. Okay. And, and so basically... You make the donation at our office and we give it to... Actually, yeah, it is a, it's a larger donation because um, I'm comping the cost of that. Right, and and I was talking to Ed, and that type of that type of service is uh, over over a couple hundred bucks. Yes, for that type of service. So if you give thirty nine dollars, Ed's going to give the other two hundred dollars <laughs> away, right. and give all all of that money to the uh, give the thirty nine dollars to the coffee to the county coffee humane, humane, society. humane society. That's right. Now I heard a question a minute ago out there in the audience. Uh, chiropractic for dogs? Uh, that's right. Um, is there such a thing? It is. And I know that might not be what you want to talk about, but mm -hmm. that was just a question. If it's got a spine, it can interfere. That spine can interfere with right. the expression of health. Right. And so uh, keeping that spine in alignment is going to optimize that health. Right. So you can see the difference in horses. Yeah, I, uncle, yeah, that was my next thing. Big, my, big, big animals like horses. Mm -hmm. That uh, my uncle uh, gets his horses adjusted. Really? Yeah, and he said he can tell a big difference. You know how they run, how smooth their gait is after an adjustment. So, He's so what, type, what, type of what type of horse does he have? Are they thoroughbred horses or are they? I would think whichever it, kind that chase the fox. Oh, oh, yeah. Those kind of horses. Yeah. And then some. Uh, I would think that those thoroughbred guys, though, you know, that yeah. those, that type of that type of money involved in big race horses mm -hmm. and stuff, they're probably specifically trained just for keeping them straight yeah. and right. Yeah. Um, and you keep us straight and right. That's correct. It's very similar, but it's different. So I don't. If, if like some of my patients mention pets, and there's a, a Dr. Reynolds in Chapel Hill who. Uh -huh. I, who I, I refer people to right, to right. adjust their animals. He adjusts everything. Our, uh, we had a, we rescued this dog, 
His name is Buzz, and um, he is a border collie. Uh huh. That dog was trouble, but anyway, we finally found him a job. <laughs> he was running from the border. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We finally found him a job, but um, chasing sheep. But he, um, if he laid down for a little while, when he got up, he would limp for the first several steps. That's sort of like me. So we got Dr. Reynolds to adjust him, and after that, he didn't limp anymore. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So yeah, Buzz. Buzz, I hope he's doing well. So you found him a job, found him something to chase, huh? Yes. Until yes. then, someone wanted to get into the the training their dogs to do sheep, and yeah. they needed a dog, so well, we supplied good. him a dog. Good, good, good. He was trouble, so he needed to. <laughs> he did not recognize the shock of the dog collar when he would go past the. He didn't care. He just he would yelp. He wouldn't jump. He wouldn't flinch. He just keep trotting. I'd call him back. He'd come back. He wouldn't hesitate. He just hey. That's the only way you knew he was going through it. Crazy. But yeah, the adjustments are really good for animals. Yeah. If your animal's sick and tired or whatever, just like humans. Yeah, yeah. You know, just like Lance Armstrong. He wants to keep his body optimized, you know, for being his competitive edge. Right, right. He wants to keep that edge. And there's a lot of professional athletes who use chiropractic to keep that competitive edge. Well, in any field you have, you're going to be more competitive. You're going to be more on your game after an adjustment. And that's just to maintain. That's just to, to to maintain peak performance, not just you know help you get healthy. So any kind of stressful activity you go through, any anything like that, chiropractic adjustments, you know, give you a better performance. You know, there, there's probably a whole lot of stubborn people out there like me, and there's probably a whole lot of folks out there who who are living with pain that they suppress. Yep. Because they don't want to take the time to go have something done. They really think, ah, well, it'll it'll heal itself. This will go away. <laughs> and what it normally does is it gets worse. But you that's still... Right. It's you progressive. Still, you, Anything and you live like with it. Mm -hmm. Anything like that's progressive. You live with it and then you don't realize how much better you could be at what you do if you could rid yourself of that pain because mm -hmm. it's something that's blocking maybe some of your physical abilities maybe some of your mind's tied up with it so yes, it, it, it is. you know you get your pain gone you're freeing up space to use your mind to do, do something else that's right. other than pain manage mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah. i mean I've people helped, need to see you i've helped people with knee pain mm -hmm. and i didn't even work on their knees it's coming from their back i've helped people with foot pain wrist pain elbow pain, not just any, you know, not just back pain and neck pain and headaches. I mean, a lot of tooth, teeth pain. Um, <laughs> you helped Philip. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Philip had a tooth pain one time and he couldn't get to the dentist quick enough. And so Ed reached in his pocket and pulled out a BB. Yeah, a little, put a little BB on that point. Now I'm trained in acupuncture, but I don't use the puncture part. Right. I just use the acu part. <laughs> <laughs> meridian therapy we call it but um most people don't understand what meridians are but they're the acupuncture channels that's where you put that's where the points are located where you put the needles to remove the blocks to that system right right and um that gives me an edge over some like if someone has some residual pain i can use some hand points in from like korean hand therapy to get rid of you know some of the residual residual pain, or to give someone a project to do at home, in between visits, right? To help, they can uh, help relieve their own pain. Yeah, to help stimulate healing in that area, because mm -hmm. it's all about you know when you get down to it, it's all about healing. Like if someone has chronic neck pain, well, you know my job is to find out not just get rid of the help them you know get rid of the pain on that visit, but my job is to help keep it gone and to help optimize their own body's ability to heal it. And so that may involve you know finding out what they're eating or how they're working in their work environment, something they're doing to bring this to keep it exacerbated. Right, right. right. Once that's eliminated, then the healing can occur. Sometimes it's just an old chronic trauma that needs to be cleared out. Right. And then so a series of adjustments will fix that but other times it's an underlying cause that we got to discover or they're not going to get any better it'll just keep coming back so my whole key is finding the underlying cause of the problem the problem of That's the right. pain of the either the pain 
or the illness. Like I have a patient that comes in for nausea, you know. She uh, played volleyball in high school and she, uh -huh. after games and stuff, she'd get nauseous. So I'd adjust her back and then go away. It was tied into her back because she'd tried other things and it didn't work. Yep. You're something. You know that? This guy's <laughs> That's just something what we right here. <laughs> And, and, you know, if you go see him, tell everybody where your office is. They might know. Some people might be watching this for the first time, and they might not know where you are. 800 Maple Hill Drive, Tullahoma, Tennessee. And that is right here on the Lynchburg Highway, Wilson Avenue. And, uh... Yeah, um, it's it's just right down from the studio here. Right from the studio, across the bridge, across, across Rock bridge. Creek, right at, the, uh, right at the air park, the new... The new uh, the oh, new the rocket park that Rotary put up right there, uh -huh. and you're you're the first house across the creek. I watched them build it. Yeah, <laughs> and you can go see this guy, and he will find a way to make you feel better. And right now, if you go and give him thirty nine dollars and donate that to the animal shelter, he's going to give you a opening. Coffee County Humane Society. Coffee County. Now Humane here's Society. another okay. thing: when people are ill. Huh? They have diseases, you know, pretty serious medical diseases. Mm -hmm. Chiropractic can help them with that as well. Okay. Because it's supplemental. It can support their own bodies and it can enhance their own body's innate healing ability. Right. And in some cases, it can stimulate and encourage it. Hey. Yes. Yeah. So what happens is, you know, if someone, a lot of times people are sick or I've got to go to the medical doctor for that. Sure, go ahead and go get the medical care you need, but use chiropractic to help manage some of the stresses you're going through because um, when you can reduce some pain, the uh, stress reduces and then the medical care will be right. more efficient at helping. Then your heart so works recover. better. Yes, everything works better. <laughs> everything works better the less pain you're in. That's right. Well, when the, uh, just, you know, it may not be like the one patient had nausea. I've had patients with um, irritable bowel mm -hmm. and different things like that and so the or breathing difficulty that sounds some ugly. of my patients have asthma and they always say that you know I'm breathing better now after this adjustment well you know it's not going to replace their inhaler but it is going to help you know if it takes the edge off the stress of breathing right. then their inhaler is going to be more effective yeah so it's all about optimizing health that's right irritable bowel Go see it. <laughs> Just go to the bathroom first. <laughs> <laughs> and give him $39 and he will give it to the Humane Society and give you a opening, all the opening things you need to become a patient and get rid of all that pain. Ed Lawson is the man. Thanks, buddy. Thank it's you. always fun having you here. <laughs> Folks, we'll be back after these messages. It is said that the eyes are the windows to the soul, and the Eye Care Center wants to make your eyes the best windows possible. The professionals at the Eye Care Center have been offering comprehensive eye care for over 30 years. From eye examinations to eye surgery, from children to seniors, we have the services you need. We pride ourselves on taking the time to fully understand our patients' wants and needs. Each patient is a unique situation and deserves our full attention and the latest treatment options. So call or stop by one of our four convenient locations and start seeing better today. Hello, this is J.D. Oliver from the Smokehouse on Mount Eagle Mountain. Me and my sisters Nancy and Betsy would like to thank you all for your continued support. This year we're celebrating our 50 year anniversary at the Smokehouse. In conjunction with our 50 year celebration, we are bringing music on the mountain every Saturday night, 7 p.m. till 10 p.m., featuring the best of Nashville. We have had some wonderful singers, hit songwriters, and Nashville's rising stars have taken the stage. Come out this Saturday night and every Saturday night through the end of the year. Make it a date night or bring the whole family. Help us celebrate 50 years in the community. Music on the Mountain is free every Saturday night at Jim Oliver's Smokehouse. Hey, this is Sean Mayer. I'd like to invite everybody out to the Smokehouse every Saturday night for great music and awesome food. <laughs> Thank you very much, y'all. Some people think that pressing their on-demand button will cost money or make their house explode or something. Of course, neither of these things is true. On-demand is just a way to access thousands of free movies and TV shows. 
The code to blow up a house is actually channel up, channel down, two star, seven seven. On demand, thousands of free movies and TV shows on your schedule, and nothing bad. We're back, and we're going to take you to part two of Jerry Harris over in Shelbyville at a national car show where some of the coolest stuff you can imagine took place this past weekend in Shelbyville. And let's go see a little bit more of that. I'm with Nancy and Dwight Ford who have come here dressed. I thought it was Bonnie and Clyde when I walked up here, but they say they're not. They're Nancy and Dwight Ford. And where are you from? We're from Hollister, Missouri, over by Branson. By Branson, she loves his southern yeah. accent. Yeah. She yeah. doesn't tell me. What yeah. about you? Uh, I'm from the, from the same place. Same place, yeah. Right. I had the same girlfriend for 37 years, even married to her now. <laughs> How long have you been showing your car? Uh, we've been showing since uh, August of 6, which is a fairly long time to keep a preservation in somewhat perfect condition. Uh, I've owned the car since uh, uh, March of 1964. My parents bought it for me as my first automobile. Actually, it's a horseless carriage, but that's okay. <laughs> Gave $250 for it. Bought it from John, J-O-N Schaefer, one owner car. Uh, had 95,000 miles on it. Pontiac claims in 1927 the car's good for 100,000 miles. It made it before we overhauled it. <laughs> it made it before you overhauled it? We made 95,000 before we overhauled it, yeah. It, it, so it served exactly what they said it would do. That's, uh, this is that your first is car. every guy either wants his first car back or has his first car. That's just a, Well, what do you think about this? Well, I think it's a beautiful car, and he always felt like he was born in the wrong decade, so that's why I dress for him this way so he feels kind of comfortable. Feels at home. <laughs> there you go. Now, tell, tell me about how did y'all come up with the outfits? Uh, well, from Pictures Magazine's uh, study of it, and uh, the drop waist was what uh, gals wore in the day, and this would be considered a little garden dress, and uh, the, the cloche hat was always set that apart, and then they were still wearing derbies, and the seersucker suit is an old-fashioned, actually, southern suit. It's a lightweight fabric that they would have worn in the summer. And this is my uncle's uh, great uncle Sidney's log chain, and that's my grandfather's watch. So that's part of part of history. We y'all ready to go then? Ain't we're ready, ready to, go. to go. Well, I appreciate y'all doing this for us, so people can get a. And I love your outfits. Now I Thank really you. do. Thank you. And I really did think you was Bonnie and Clyde. I was afraid to walk up to you at first. But <laughs> Nancy writes some and has done some lecturing on on fashion, and. Well, you, you tell it probably better than I do, how we bring cars out, et cetera. When we do this, it opens people up to us, and we're able to talk about their projects, and we encourage them to finish their projects. And we found people that have automobiles that haven't been restored, and maybe they can't do it, and try to get them to someone that they could sell it to or get it to where it could be restored and it enjoyed. Get, you know, but it's great. all about entertaining and enjoying the um hobby of automobiles and antique automobiles that's fantastic so what we could say is um, uh, all y'all that are listening to this fine program uh, we're encouraging you to get your cars out to them maybe you're not here today get your cars out and work on them and, and uh, do your have restoration fun. yeah and have fun you can come join us too all y'all and all us we need yeah. to do that yeah. we got and youngs too yeah and youngs too we're going to do it all <laughs> thank you much i appreciate it's it been fun. thank oh, you you're, you're, you're a delight i'm here with bob stein one of the judges for today's car show and bob you're you came in from out of town yes from norfolk virginia and how long have you been a judge about three years now i have uh, 36 credits 36 different shows all right, so each time you do a show, you get a new credit. That's correct. When you're judging judging one of the car shows, what is the main thing that you look for? main thing we look for is originality. We want the cars to be as close to the way they came from the factory as possible. And this means not anything of the uh, options that you could bolt on from uh, Pep Boys or anything like that. These, are the car, these cars should be just what you would find in the dealer showroom when they were new. All right. And I'm sure that a lot of these, I've noticed a lot of these cars, there had to be hour after hour after hour worth of work done on these. But when you're looking at them, do you look at the motor, the 
interior, exterior, everything? We look at everything. The The judging is actually broken in, into uh, teams, and we have a, a person each assigned to do the interior, the exterior, the chassis, and the engine. So it's one person devoted, and the same person judges the same area in every car, so you have fair judging across the board. I'm with Calvin Kincaid, and Calvin, you had a lot to do with putting this together, so tell us what all you had to do. Well, first of all, we uh, we started about five years ago, uh, and we asked AACA if they would be interested in us sponsoring this yesterday's Grand National Meet and today's National Meet. Uh, of course, to do that, we had to be sure we could handle it. They wanted us to be sure we could, and, and we proved ourselves to them. We had had an event back in 1994, a national event like today's show. And I guess we did reasonably well because they uh, certainly said that we could do it again. And we've been working on it for five years. Well, I know I talked to Tom Balls and some other people, and they say that you really worked hard on this. Well, everybody did. Uh, we had to. Uh, the, uh, the, the showgrounds is really a perfect place for a car show. I know it's designed for horses. But everyone's comments are that it's great. The facilities are out of this world. Uh, you know, the, uh, the conveniences, the uh, facilities, everything is just almost perfect. Well, I know everybody I talked to was very positive about what's going on here. They really like it. We want everybody to enjoy the cars. We want our community to realize that this is great for all of us. It brings a lot of visitors. You know, we have, uh, we have representatives from 35 states here, cars that are here. We had one gentleman that came all the way from Alaska, an 11-day trek to get here, uh, and he won last night. Won his award last night uh, at our banquet. Uh, it's it's just great. Serving you as a local firefighter. Proudly served our country in the United States Air Force. Serving Tullahoma. Helping our kids. Hi, I'm Terry Stroop. Your comfort is our service. We'd like to thank Tullahoma for the privilege of serving your heating and cooling needs. How can toys like these lead to a six-year-old's death and leave another child permanently brain damaged? Because they're not toys at all. A safety message from your local fire department and this station. Oh, there's my cat. I, should I put her away? <laughs> Whiten it up a little bit. How's this? Great. Good. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> So you've been meaning to do something healthy, commune with nature, get outdoors and meet new people. We have the perfect solution. Come hike with us. You can find a Tennessee Trails Association chapter near you, including Clarksville, Columbia Franklin, Cove Lake, Highland Rim, Jackson, Knoxville, Oak Ridge, Martin Weekly, Memphis, Murfreesboro, Nashville, Plateau at Crossville, Rugby in the Big South Fork, and Upper Cumberland. We're on the web at TennesseeTrails.org. It's fun, it's stress-free, and it's good for you. See you on the trails. This past Saturday evening, we had an opening of the member show at the Fine Arts Center. Great stuff. Your neighbors are very talented. Let's check it out. This is the member show at the Tullahoma Fine Arts Center, and the parking lot is full. Looky here, looky here. Isn't that something? That's a, that's a beautiful pair right there, bookends. How are things going, Miss Annie? And this is the membership. And there are members everywhere. Great stuff everywhere. Memberships. Memberships everywhere. Good girl. Proud of you. Thanks. 
And there's a picture by Bob Couch called the bumper crop. And it's a bunch of bumpers. And there's a nanny room right there, who is our director. And the room is full again. It's always fun when the room is full. Member art. Look at that scroll. Isn't that beautiful? Look at all this. Look at all this great work on the wall. You know, you never know what you're going to find out when you come to one of these. I've known Kyle Copeland for years. He's a friend and I never knew he was this talented in other than music, but his artwork is phenomenal. Sweet Jimmy. There's only one word. Enlightening. There you go. Isn't that beautiful? Enlightening. What you know, what wonderful thing exists in the light. Yeah. Going down the path. Going down the path. Out of the darkness into the light. Into the light. Beautiful. Great job, Karen. Thank you very much. And that's the lovely Miss Karen Engel right there. She is the artist. That's me. All right, good girl. Thank you. And board member. This is some of Becky Shelton's stuff here. She is a recycled kid. Look at that metal dress with multicolored boots. The cows. I keep asking her to do the talkative bull, but she hadn't done that yet. Those cows look so contented. There must be a talkative bull somewhere. Candy couch is Rutledge Falls. There's some Timmy Lee Smith paintings right there. Lovely. There's Weldon Payne. Excuse me. How you doing, my friend? Okay, John. Good to see you. I'm looking at all this wonderful artwork. What do you think about it? I think it's nice. I think it is too. Of course, mine's on the wall downstairs. I've this already nice. seen yours on the wall down there. My friend, Weldon Payne. A member long term of the Chillahama Fine Arts Center. A great guy. essentially have written the work of the people who've been here. Um, we've got a great director right now, uh, Annie Rohn. Uh, she's 
been instrumental in getting the word out. We've got a great board of directors and we have great members. Um, Anita's party, wherever you are. Hello. Oh, uh, Blue Star, Gold Star, she has been instrumental in getting everything set up for essentially the last eight months. Uh, and for this particular art show, for our members, which I'm glad for everybody that's come out tonight, uh, we really appreciate it. It shows everyone that we've, who's a member here and what they do. Um, it's been Anita, it's been um, Betty to Bertrand. Uh, who else? Joanna. Joanna. Wanda. Wanda. I mean, this, over here. Red Street. Jennifer. Jennifer. Everybody's been, had a hand in on it. We appreciate everyone coming here tonight. Money. We'll take donations. Uh, <laughs> New members, if you're not a member, we want to have you. Uh, and that's about it, really. We have 40 new members last month, which I think might be a record. Uh, we're getting to that number hopefully this month. And that's about it. Uh, we've got a lot of kids running around here now, which is what this place is about. And uh, thank you all all for coming. And this is some of Betty Bertrand's artwork, my neighbor and friend. And uh, she is she is new to this art deal. And look at here, look what's happened. See that right there? See the red dot on the tag? That means Betty Bertrand sold a piece of art at the members' art center. You need to come see what's going on at the Tallahassee Fine Art Center. This show will be up for a while, and you need to come look and see what your talented friends and neighbors have done. Look around, the changes catch your eye And you come to realize One can make a difference Since 1915, Kiwanis International has touched millions of lives When you help one child, you help the world But one can make a difference We don't have Julia to say hello, yeah. everybody. Exhibit at the yeah. Art Center. I'm those are, proud of that. Those are members, so yes. they're they're your neighbors and friends, and they're talented. The folks in this town are talented, yes, they and are. you they need to go are. by there and see that. We're so fortunate that yeah. we have such a beautiful art center in our community. Yeah, guys and dolls. This week, next weekend. Next weekend, <laughs> ice cream social. <laughs> it's After over. That. Time to say it's goodbye. It's over. Time to ah. say. See, you see you next time. Come back next week. Andrew, just...